When I say melatonin, most people think of a supplement that they take to fall asleep. And I want to break that down and have you realize why summertime is actually a phenomenal time to support melatonin production, but not the type of melatonin that you're thinking of. So first and foremost, I think um, the supplement industry, is, I mean, melatonin is a massive supplement, right? It makes billion dollars a year, a year to sell melatonin supplements because so many people have sleep issues. Now, through my lens, I obviously like to talk about blocking artificial light at night and setting our circadian rhythm with daytime light in order for the brain to naturally produce its own melatonin. And remember that melatonin is a melatonin that we do produce when we sense darkness. And we sense darkness, our eyes and our brain interpret darkness as having no blue light in our environment. And as soon as that, as soon as that signal appears, which naturally it would be after sunset, then my pineal gland in my brain would start to produce a significant amount of melatonin. But uh, yeah, and, and that melatonin will help to put me asleep and will run a lot of my cellular repair antioxidant programs when I am asleep. But that melatonin that's pr produced in the brain from the pineal gland and that helps us to fall asleep, that melatonin makes up only 5% of the body's total melatonin. And in fact, the vast majority of the melatonin we're designed to make is during the day but it's not made in the pineal gland. Uh, and this is a much more recent, um, recent research discovery by the world's preeminent, uh, when the, let's put it this way, the world's preeminent melatonin researcher, Russell Ryder, teamed up with an optical expert, uh, basically a lighting expert named Scott Zimmerman. And they've done a lot of research now to show that our inside of our bodies or inside of our cells and inside of our mitochondria we actually make lots of melatonin. And that melatonin, it doesn't put us to sleep. That melatonin serves to clean up cellular damage all day long. And so um, picture this, right? Picture us, uh, picture ourselves going through natural metabolic function, natural metabolic function. As we naturally go through our daily cellular processes, but specifically in the mitochondria where we where we flow electrons essentially to make water and ATP, we get natural production of things that could be inflammatory for the cell called reactive oxygen species. They're not always inflammatory, they can be good. But when they get to a level that's too aggressive, that's when things in the cell can start to go awry and we could start to drive inflammatory processes. However, Thankfully, our mitochondria, while they're making the water and the ATP and can monitor the amount of reactive oxygen species that are being produced, they can also make melatonin. And that melatonin acts in an antioxidant fashion, meaning if there's a excessive reactive oxygen species production or excessive damage or inflammation inside of the cell, that melatonin is produced and can sop up the damage and can calm it to keep the cell in a very healthy state. So we need to, we're designed to make this melatonin all day long. Now that's just with natural metabolism. So picture now if all of a sudden I am in, my cells are being bombarded with a type of toxin. That toxin could be non-native EMFs. It could be a toxin we breathe in. It could be a toxin that we ingest. But that toxin has the ability to impair mitochondrial function. Glyphosate is a key one here, right? Fluoride is a key one here. So there's a lot, I mean, pretty much any toxin you name has the potential to create mitochondrial dysfunction. So if you're now having um, mitochondria who are not as efficient at making water and ATP because they're being exposed to a toxin, and instead they're making a lot of aggressive reactive oxygen species, we have to be able to make melatonin to match that so that we can, again, keep that cell in its healthiest state possible. But these days, so many of us are not actually helping our mitochondria make that melatonin. And that's because that melatonin is made in response to certain ranges of light that penetrate our bodies and stimulate the mitochondria to make that melatonin for us. And one specific range is called the, well, the specific range that's needed on a regular basis for essentially for us to be bathing our bodies in is called near infrared. So it's just outside of the red portion of the spectrum. So if I were to 
split light through a prism or a rainbow, we would see, you know, that there's red right here. Well, just outside of what we cannot see, the range that we cannot see with our eyes, starts a huge range of light called infrared. And the portion that's closest to the red is called near infrared. And that near infrared, where we could that can penetrate really deeply into the body. That's that that uh, red light therapy panels or photobiomodulation contain at least one wavelength of near infrared due to its tissue penetration depth and how it can support the mitochondria, support collagen production. There's a lot of beneficial effects to red light therapy. But that being said, in terms of our case of this cellular melatonin, this mitochondrial melatonin, we need that near infrared. What's why aren't we getting it these days? Why do I believe that the vast majority of us are not making adequate amounts of this mitochondrial or cellular melatonin that stays inside of the cell and cleans up damage? And that's because of the fact that we're not getting near infrared exposure. When we had incandescent bulbs, a portion of that was had near infrared. If we're out in the sun, a huge portion of that is near infrared. And even if we're around greenery in the shade, that greenery reflects the near infrared back to our bodies. When we were using campfire, we had near infrared, but modern light bulbs due to energy efficiency requirements and modern window glass also due to energy efficiency requirements are blocking a, the modern light bulbs don't have any, there's zero in LEDs, zero in fluorescence. Modern window glass blocks a vast majority, 40% or more of the infrared spectrum. And so these days living indoors, we are infrared deficient. And because we're near infrared deficient, we're not soaking that wavelength into our bodies and stimulating mitochondrial melatonin production efficiently. These are mitochondria then that can't clear up natural metabolic damage all day long. And if we're being, you know, um, bombarded by certain toxins, which that's, it sounds like an aggressive word, but really toxins are pervasive these days, non-native EMFs being one of them, not to mention if we don't filter our water, not to mention if we can't eat certified organic or find small regenerative farms to eat uh, the food and the animal products. So, so we have a lot of toxin exposure that has the potential to create mitochondrial dysfunction. So we need to actually even have more near infrared exposure than we would have needed, let's say 200 years ago when our toxin exposure would have been lower. And so this is setting the stage up for cells that are just undergoing excessive ROS or reactive oxygen species production, create driving inflammatory cascades in the cell, ultimately creating inflamed cells. And when you have inflamed cells in inflamed organs, you start to have these organs that can't run all of their tasks. So let's say my digestive tract cannot make adequate digestive enzymes. Let's say my muscles have a hard time um, staying in oxidative phosphorylation or healthy oxygen metabolism and instead start to build up lactic acid. Let's say my brain starts producing aggressive reactive oxygen species and I have uh, impaired cognition, right? These are not uncommon things these days. And so I find it very important for people to understand how to maximize all forms of melatonin production, but especially this subcellular melatonin, this mitochondrial melatonin that we've just become aware of in the past five years or so. Um, pineal melatonin is absolutely essential as well, but it serves the purpose of tidying up the, the body during the nighttime. And if we solely rely on pineal melatonin to clean up natural daily metabolic damage or more aggressive forms of cellular damage because of toxin exposure, we're not gonna, we're not going to start our day in a quote unquote fresh and clean state inside of our cells. And so we're basically starting our day from cellular dysfunction, from mitochondrial dysfunction, and then just adding the damage onto it. We're never fully re recovering healthy cells. And over time, you can imagine this leads to symptoms and ultimately a diagnosis of a, a dis-ease that has a root in the inability to clean up the natural cellular damage that occurs throughout, throughout the day. So near infrared exposure is key. Now I have a webinar coming up where I'm gonna teach all about um, mitochondrial melatonin production, pineal melatonin production, and vitamin D production, because the summer is a very crucial time to learn about these things. Think about it this way. In the warmer months of the year, 
we are more likely to want to go outside and expose ourselves to the energy coming from the sun that we can use to our benefit to optimize this subcellular mitochondrial melatonin, to optimize vitamin D production through the skin. And I'm going to talk in future videos about why we need to make vitamin D through the skin and why we cannot replicate the effects of sunlight through a supplement. It is impossible. And in fact, I've seen long-term high-dose vitamin D supplementation actually create harm for people, especially people dealing with things like autoimmune conditions or thyro uh, hypothyroidism. So again, that's for, a that's for a future video. But this is the perfect time of year for those who live in summer temperatures to get yourself out into the correct light sequences or the light signals and the co co correct ranges of light from various types of ultraviolet to the infrared portion to maximize the body's production of the key hormones that we produce, including melatonin and vitamin D. And yes, I said hormone because vitamin D was misnamed. It's actually a hormone. Stay tuned. I'll, I'll talk way more about that in a future video here coming up soon.